so this is a really confusing concept. Um, the this idea of sandbox domains when um, when I started to hear about this, I, I didn't really understand what um, uh, this what sandbox domains means. But at the root of client side web security, so if we talk CSRF and XSS, um, at the root of that lays the same origin policy. Only websites from the same origin um, or like the same origin only can talk to each other, right? Your own website, the, the HTML can issue a, uh, API re request to your API on, on the same domain. Um, the same origin policy has some quirks. You know, you can send get requests. So on my website, I can add an image an image tag and load an image from a different domain. So the same origin policy does not prevent me to load an image from a different domain. So I'm still sending a GET request to that, but um, it's not as easy as sending a POST request. Now, POST requests can be sent, but I cannot, for example, control the content type of that POST request. Um, so if you, for example, if your API requires or takes only JSON, um, by default, you shouldn't be able to make a post request cross origin and so forth. Of course, like there are a lot of footnotes, um, but in principle, we can say that websites are isolated from each other and websites can only do, uh, only act on their own website. And that's why as soon as you have user generated content, here they say, if there is user uploaded HTML, JavaScript, or Flash applets. So basically any dangerous, interact, more interactive website stuff. It has to be isolated and has to be put on its own domain, on its own website. Um, and that's what we use then, um, you know, the subdomains from, for. So uh, whenever you build a service where users can add their own HTML or JavaScript, you need to put that um, on the, their own domains. Uh, otherwise, you will have an basically endless war. Uh, a sandbox domain would be an iframe, was a question in chat. Uh, no, no, a sandbox domain can be, you know, the domain can be added as an iframe because it's a sandbox domain on the same page, so it looks nice. But f a sandbox domain is just a different domain. You have your main domain, like you log in on that domain or your API is on that domain um, or the payment stuff is on that domain. But um, when you have user generated or users that can upload HTML, it has to be on a different domain. Think about Amazon S3 um, and websites hosted on Amazon S3. When you actually want to host your website, you need to use you know, the, the version with the subdomain so that you will have your own subdomain and your own domain. Otherwise, if, if, if every file on Amazon S3 would be available from Amazon S3.com slash a path, then you could never host your blog there because if you have a login there or something or cookies, you know, other people could upload an HTML document and could interact with this data. You know, you know what I mean? So whenever you have user, have the ability for users to upload HTML or JavaScript, um, you need to put this on a different domain and then you call that sandbox domain. Um, sandbox is a term um, that we use to say it's an isolated environment, it's a restricted environment. So uh, the, those domains, those different domains that we use to host user-generated content so it doesn't do, can't do harm in terms of CSRF or XSS, um, we call that then a sandbox domain. Does that make sense?